Good morning, YouTubers. I hope you're having a wonderful day. The other day I saw the movie The Avengers Endgame and it made me think we are, as an audience, very ready to accept the hero's arc. The hero that starts out as an anti-hero, something bad. He's doing something that we all disagree with. But over time, and in this case over the span of 22 movies, you see an arc toward redemption. And as an audience, we are more than willing to accept it because we judge the hero based on the last act. And we kind of forget about everything else. We forget about the arc that he had to go through, the bad things they did, how they struggled really realizing who they are. And it made me think, well, the justice system, it doesn't really do that very well. Yes, it takes into consideration some of the good stuff you did, some of the positive impact you had on a community, but it really largely ignores the entire arc and feels that you should pay for everything that you do. And we see the dichotomy of how we personally view the hero's arc in real life. We see it in uh, Snowden. Was he a hero or a villain? We see that in Julian Assange. Was he a hero? Because he was sure held as a hero by people on all sides of the aisle at one time or another and then also considered a villain. And we see in today's stories of Marcus Hutchings. Marcus was a hacker, is a hacker, and only two years ago was held as a great hero for having stopped a malware attack by North Korea against the West that took down the entire British healthcare system and put much of the world in danger. In fact, he's credited for having stopped the attack before it actually reached the United States. And within a couple of months, he was stopped in the United States, indicted for six counts involved in an act that he did years before that. How do we see the hero's arc? Somebody starts out as a villain and then becomes a hero. And how does the legal system? We're going to take a look at that through Marcus Hutchins' case right here today. This is going to work, Steve. By the way, work continues on our complaint to the Federal Trade Commissions against Patreon and PayPal for having banned individuals that then attack potential competitors. If you're interested in finding more information about the work that we do, link down below to YouTuberLaw.com. When the lights are out and you stumble in the dark, you kept pushing on. Hi, my name is Leo Lesser. I'm a tech lawyer and this, this is YouTuber Law. And I have to admit that having watched Avengers The Endgame felt like a feast. So much information being given to us that if you are a fan of the MCU and you haven't watched all 21 movies up till now, you feel like you've been rewarded for all your dedication to it. And one of the most satisfying scenes in Avengers Endgame, and frankly one of the more heartbreaking scenes, is the interaction between Black Widow and Hawkeye. We see them through the movies develop this heroic arc, starting out doing something either morally dubious or outright evil, and then growing to become a hero who's willing to sacrifice their lives for the sake of others. With Black Widow, we see her having started as an agent of the Soviet Union, growing to become a true hero who then sacrifices herself for, for the people that she loves. And we see something very similar, a little more complicated with, with Hawkeye, who starts out rather with a dubious moral ground where he's working for the government, pretty much doing whatever the government wants him to do, regardless of right and wrong, then becoming a hero through his inclusion in the Avengers, then falling after the Infinity War into despair, becoming Ronan, basically an Avenger on his own right, murdering people on massive scale because he feels that they are guilty of crimes against other individuals, basically becoming a mass murderer, the judge, jury, and executioner, and then through the end game, returning to becoming the hero who is willing to sacrifice himself once again for all of humanity. That's an arc that we see often play out not only in the MCU universe, but also in other movie lines. And we are often willing to accept it. We're willing to accept that people should be judged on their final act of their lives, not on the intermediary, recognizing that people often start in dubious or uh, low moral levels and then grow through their lifetime to become the hero. We cheer that. We don't go back and say, you know, Black Widow, yes, you were a hero, yes, you sacrificed yourself, but do you remember when you were working for the Soviet Union? So, frankly, yeah, but it's not quite as, as nice as a hero. You're not quite Captain America. You were not always morally superior individual. And when we come to Hawkeye, we don't say, yes, you went through an arc, you were a hero sometimes, an evil guy sometimes, but even though you were good at the end, and we all cheered when we saw you reunite with your family, 
that's great, but do you remember five minutes ago when you were pretty much a mass murderer and you were just killing people because you felt that they were guilty of crimes against other individuals or part of organized crime or they were taking advantage of uh, some of the mayhem in the world? Yes, you should pay for that. No, we pretty much are accepting that he went through an arc, that that was somehow morally acceptable to have gone through it, and we're judging him on the final act. And yet, when we look at real life and see how our justice system works, we don't see that. Our justice system doesn't care that much about the arc that, that people have to go through. It, it pretty much judges them based on individuals' acts. So there are heroic moments in your life. That's great, but the justice system is going to actually look at you and say, well, the other moments, that's where we're going to judge you. And we are going to make sure that you pay for those moments regardless of the arcs that you went to. Even though you became a hero and you contributed and you gave so much to humanity or you prevented harm in the world, that's great. And we might use that a little bit to mitigate uh, the punishment that we're going to give you, but that is not going to erase the harm that you created and you're going to have to pay for that regardless of what else you've done to the world. And we see it over and over again. Like I said, we see it with Snowden, we see it with Julian Assange, and we see it in today's stories of Marcus Hitchens, who as a hacker did what many hackers do, actually honed their skill doing things that are morally questionable or even outright illegal, but over time through growth and maturity realized that they can join the workforce and use those skills for better things, and in his case did something that many called heroic, and he stopped an attack by North Korea. North Korea released the malware known as WannaCry that spread across 150 different countries, halted the entire systems of many, many companies and governments, in this case also the healthcare system in Britain, and actually caused lives to be put at risk. He, on his own, without any prompting, without any request, without any payment in return, he stopped it. Now, Marcus wanted to remain anonymous, but as most of these kind of stories go, eventually people discovered who he was and what he did, and he became a celebrity. So, only a couple of months after the story comes out, he attends a hacker conference in Vegas. All goes well until he tries to leave and go back to Britain, where he lives, and he's arrested by the FBI. See, a few years back, Marcus developed and marketed Kronos, a financial trojan that was used to steal people's financial information. He developed somebody else, an unnamed individual, marketed, arguably they shared in the profits. So when he's leaving the United States, the FBI arrests him based on charges involving Kronos, even though he's there as a hero for having stopped the North Korean attack of WannaCry. So the question today is how should we judge people like Marcus? Let's take a look at the indictment and get a handle on the kind of things that he was charged with. And in front of us is the indictment filed against Marcus Hutchins in July of 2017. And in it it says, under count one, Marcus knowingly conspired to knowingly cause the transmission of a program information coded command and as a result of such content intentionally caused damage without authorization. So he conspired with another individual to transmit Kronos, which eventually hurt people. Count two, Marcus knowingly disseminated by electronic means an advertisement of any electronic, mechanical, or other device, knowing and having reason to know that the design of such device renders it primarily useful for the purpose of surreptitious interception of electronic communication. Effectively, that he was advertising the sale of a device that practically was only useful in stealing people's information. Count three, that he intentionally sent an electronic, mechanical, or other device in interstate and foreign commerce, that he actually transmitted Kronos, count four, that he intentionally sold any electronic, mechanical, or other device, that he actually sold for profit Kronos, count five, that he knowingly and intentionally endeavored to intercept and procure any other person to intercept certain electronic communication, namely computer keystrokes of others without the knowledge or consent of said others. And this is kind of an extension of advertising and marketing, the idea that he actually found people that then were willing to use his uh, device to then steal information from others. And count six, that he knowingly caused the transmission of a program information code and command, and as a result of such conduct, attempted to cause damage without authorization. Again, that he basically transmitted code that then caused damage to others. Now, these six counts were part of an indictment that was filed in 2017, and he was then placed under house arrest, I believe in Los Angeles. Now, he waits a year, and during that time they are negotiating, they are arguing back and forth, he's fighting everything that they're doing, 
and a year later they file another indictment, at which point they're adding four more causes of action. And in front of us is the first superseding indictment against Marcus Hutchins filed in June of 2018. And in the new indictment, they add four additional causes of action involving the sale of the code, helping others sell it, as well as lying to the FBI. Now, he remains under house arrest for an additional year, which brings us back to uh, last week where he pled guilty to two counts. And in front of us is the plea agreement by Marcus Hutching as of April 19. And it says the defendant has been charged in 10 counts of a superseding indictment. The defendant voluntarily agrees to plead guilty to counts one and two of the superseding indictment. And if you remember, count one involved conspiracy with another individual to develop and market Kronos, and count two involves the advertisement of Kronos. The parties understand and agree that the offenses to which the defendant will enter a plea of guilty carry the following maximum terms of imprisonment and fine. Count one, up to five years in prison and up to $250,000 in fines, and count two, up to five years in prison and up to $250,000 in fines. So Marcus, who as a hacker broke the law and caused financial damage to many people around the world only to become a hero, who then halts a massive attack by North Korea against a developed world and actually saves a great portion of the American economy through his, his action is now facing 10 years in prison, about a half a million dollars in damages. How should he be judged? Should he be judged as an MCU hero, basically saying we should only look at your final act? You did something so good that we should ignore everything you did in the past? Or should he look be looked upon the way the Justice Department looks at him and says, that's great, but you need to pay for everything that you've done in, in the past. You need to pay for all the wrongs because whatever good you did, whatever help you gave us in the United States or the rest of the developed world, it doesn't pay for the damage that you caused. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, if you have questions, any concerns, anything you want to discuss, just leave them down below. I'd love to talk to you. I'll see you next time. When the lights are out and you stumble in the dark Everything is wrong, you feel like it's your fault